It's really funny. I read somewhere that um, when you got married, you didn't know who anyone was but Sachin. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Especially at your I, wedding. I knew a lot of people, like a lot of cricketers who played when I was younger. Right. You know? And then there was a complete turn off when I, I was not in touch with cricket. And then we got mad at So during the reception, a lot of people came and congratulated. And I used to, who is that? <laughs> was there anybody that you really should have known that you didn't know? I think I should have known all of them. <laughs> Maybe tell a little it was brief. a bit unfair. I, th I, I don't recall with who it was, but somebody came and congratulated. And so I, sh I shook hands and I said, I'm Priyanka. And the, the person did not say his name because he's not used to saying that. And I was like, sorry, I didn't get you. Oh, no. <laughs> Foundation works on maternal health and neonatal health, mm -hmm. newborn children, and we work on physical health, mental health, and we started off in Delhi because it was much easier to start for me, especially having grass seven me. And then we did a couple of things in UP also, and we do a medical camp here like once a week or once in two weeks, depending okay. on the need. Right. Usually we have a turn up of like 100 children, 50 women. So we inform the community mobilizers up front so that they can uh, inform people in Islam to be available okay. if they would like any checkups. And how many doctors do you usually have at the location? So we have about uh, two doctors and two assistants. Yes. What an incredible service this is for them though. So you, you get children and women that come here with all sorts of you know, problems, problems and, and any checkups they want to have to discuss their problems with the doctors. That's why we have gynecologists so that women can specially discuss with them and the pediatrician so that they can check out all these children. And the treatment is completely free? Yes, it's completely free. And we even try covering their medicines most of oh, the time. Okay. Yes. So depending on what they need, what their diagnosis is, you try and help them with their entire treatment from the consultation through to the medication. Yeah. That's and we try talking to the uh, hospitals if there's any serious problem to have some referrals done and bring them to the hospital and get treatment done there. It's just been a year, of course, we're not there yet as we want to be and we are growing gradually. Now we are getting more support from other hospitals as well. Mm -hmm. And recently we've been, be we've been in touch with uh, some corporates as well. Okay. so that we can conduct it on a bigger level if we have sufficient funds and we can go to different states as well so we are going to focus more on UP also now right. and our main objective is to educate women about themselves so that they can make informed choices mm -hmm. So we know you as Priyanka Raina. Okay. Let's take it all the way back to the Priyanka Chaudhary days. Your family and the Raina family knew each other quite well. Yes, they did. So we grew up in the same city. It was a very small town, a uh, little further than Ghaziabad. And there's this um, complex, you call it, ordinance factory, which is from the central government. And that's where our fathers worked together. It's a very secure complex, closed. Inside you have schools, hospitals, everything. And my father was a teacher. So how old were you both at this point? I was about, when I met him for the first time, I think I was like 10. 
10 wow. years. So you've known Suresh since you were 10 years yes, old. Yes, I did. Technically. And did your families meet a lot? Would you say your families were close? Well, my father saw him every day because he was his teacher. Yeah. And his, uh, and his coach as well, right? Sports uh, coach? Sports, yes. Wow. And we were neighbors, so my mom and his mother were also, also very close to each other. So do you remember Suresh as part of your early childhood life, like the two of you maybe playing together or hanging out together or maybe him <laughs> bullying you? He used to sing a lot, I remember that. Sing a lot, really? <laughs> yeah, he loved singing even then. Is he good? <laughs> He's good, yes, he yeah, for sure. So were you like good friends? Uh, no, because we were not really at the same school. So right. I do remember him seeing every now and then if there were any, any um, dance competitions or any uh, so you school don't see functions. Each other then? Yeah, okay. yeah. And or what sometimes on the streets. Or if he's playing with my brother then. And was there ever any kind of indication from your mothers or from your family? <laughs> no, it was just way no, too no. early back We were then. just too young, yes. So, and then what, how old were you both when you kind of lost touch in between, right? Well, when he was 13, then he went to the boarding school. And after that, we did not really see each other much. He came for holidays sometimes, so I saw him. But, and then I think in 2008, when I was already like 20 or 21 or so, then I saw him in Mumbai. We just bumped into each other on the airport. So what's different when you see him at the airport? Well, it was nice to see him, of course. You know, everybody used to talk about him back home that he's doing really well and everybody was so proud of him so it was nice to see him and we exchanged numbers and spoke a little and after that i was actually leaving to the netherlands that time okay so i moved there and he continued further and then we lost touch again okay so what age are we finally when priyanka is looking at suresh in a different way <laughs> how old were you finally when you realized that hmm, this guy could actually be someone that i might spend my life with 29 <laughs> 29? 20 is wasted, right? <laughs> it took him 19 years. Yeah. Wow, smooth, Suresh, <laughs> real smooth. <laughs> I have your coffee. Oh, thank you. Could there you, you just go. Keep it here and could you pour it and could you just do it quietly? Some cookies for you? Yes. Just quietly, please. We're in the middle of a conversation. Sorry, uh, ma'am. Sorry to disturb. Ma'am, is that okay? Would you like some honey with that? Where's the lemon? Would you like a lemon? And honey? Uh, and better me. service, please? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so kind of you. There will be no tip. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were an investment banker in Amsterdam, were you studying for some sort of exams? Well, I did studies as well, so okay. I was into commercial banking. Oh, so not investment banking? Not, no, not completely in, into investment banking, but more into the backend side. But you were studying for some sort of exams, and I heard that Suresh would wait outside the bank with a, with a lunchbox for you. He did. Did he? So I think that was like, I was in a training that time. Yeah. So he used to come and pick me up and also bring stuff for me cook for me and he loves cooking by the way does he i don't know if you're aware of that no so do you guys cook together yes i'll be the helper chopping onions and things like that oh god making rice plain rice <laughs> <laughs> the exciting stuff <laughs> so when you guys are just like hanging out together spending time together I mean, are you watching sport because you're both sports fans? Are you watching football and cricket or are you watching movies? It is like that actually. Yeah. Sometimes we're watching the matches. Like last summer we watched a lot of matches together. And World Cup you must have watched a lot together. But are you starting to enjoy cricket as much now, you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Especially if he's playing, then you have a heart beating if everything is going okay or not. Yeah. I've always wondered what it's like for you, especially because you've been thrust into this world of cricket now, you know? Yeah. What is that pressure like when you're watching the love of your life play? 50 cameras in your face, watching every reaction. What's going through your head? For me, half of my focus is always on Gracia. Okay, <laughs> distraction. <good. laughs> distraction. Yeah. And half is on Suresh, of course, who is playing. And on the team in general, because we are like a family, especially if we talk about IPL. It's one big family, you know, mm -hmm. supporting the team. And it's a very special feeling that we all are cheering for the same team and wishing the best comes as like a team spirit. He's had a great record in the IPL. Yeah. He's been, performance-wise, he's had such an incredible run. Let's see how much you know. 
How many consecutive appearances do you think that he's had for the Chennai Super Like number of matches. Like number of games. I'm gonna give you a clue. It's a number between 150 and 160. That's gonna be a tough one. Uh, you have 10 numbers to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go one by one. <laughs> one, I'm, I'm just guessing, huh? 153. No, 158. 158, oh, isn't that insane? Really? He's played the most matches in the IPL. Yes. Your husband yeah. has. Yes. Isn't that crazy? That's so, so great. So proud. Uh, and the most all-time runs and catches. And he scores more than 400 plus runs every season. He's a star. <laughs> Good that you don't ask me about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know either, it's okay. All I know that I'm very proud of him, that <laughs> don't know the stats, yeah. don't know the numbers. Yeah. And what a great story for you to tell Gracia, right? I'm sure she'll be very proud. What is Gracia's reaction when she sees Suresh on TV? She's always screaming. Even if she's in a corner in the room, she would just come running. Oh, that's Papa on TV. Hey, Mama, that's Papa. Oh, that's so adorable. Yeah. And has have you ever recorded this reaction to show I, her, him? I sometimes try. Of course, it's not the first one. By the time I'm ready, you have my the phone, phone ready. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> GoPros in every corner to capture the reaction. Yeah. Because I mean, he's playing at that point, but how beautiful for him to see her reaction. He's always asking me, like, did she watch the match? Did she enjoy it? Really? Yeah. I mean, because I... We, when we went for IPL, um, first couple of matches were very difficult because it was too loud for her, too hot, and she did not really relate to it. Mm -hmm. And then she saw other children sitting there cheering, so she started liking it. Does she understand? Like, does she have an understanding of what his world is all about? I think now she kind of does. She started relating to it. That was the whole idea that we wanted to have a child, you know, just after we got married, because Suresh had this thing like, he wants his child to see him play okay. and grow up with the whole thing. You know? The memory. The yeah. memories and see what his or her father actually does. Mm -hmm. And I think the child has to be like two to three years old before they start relating to it. motherhood being like for you? Very different, mm -hmm. very new. My mother always says when the baby is born, the mother is also born. Mm. I do not really understand the meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like there's no mother before the baby is born. The mother is also new. Yeah. I never grew up with these feelings, okay, one day I have to get married. That's how I'll become a mother. I never ever thought about it. So, so it wasn't part of your plan? Well, I wanted to have children, but I never really thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I was the youngest in the family, so I have never seen any younger child growing in right. front of my eyes. Because you've always been the baby. Yeah, so it was a very new and different experience for sure, but very beautiful. So you've entered this world of motherhood, you've decided to become a mother. Yeah. Um, and that wasn't an easy experience for you, it was something that was quite tough for you to go through. And I know that you have nothing to hide, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about that journey. and how that led to the Gracia Reiner Foundation? Yes, I was still working till my seventh month. Mm -hmm. So I was still in the Netherlands, I was working there. I had a little bit of complications, so the labor needed to be induced. Okay. So doctor said, okay, this is the date we're gonna start inducing the labor, and I think it takes a maximum one or two days before the baby arrives. Okay. So Suresh also traveled to Holland, and he was there with me in the hospital. <laughs> and we started the process, like, Five days I was in the hospital and there were no contractions. Oh Everybody was waiting and this was this like gala event in the hospital in the room. <laughs> my mother is there, my brother is there, Suresh is there, all my friends visiting every day. A friend is doing my hair. Nice. <laughs> then the doctor said, you know what, you, you're not ready yet, so maybe it's nice that you go home and take a break. So we went home and we said, okay, let's go out, have some dinner tonight. So we went <laughs> after all that. We went to a restaurant, we had dinner, and then I was like, oh, I feel my contraction oh. <laughs> in the restaurant. I was like, okay, we have to rush to the hospital. We went to the hospital again, midnight, and around four in the morning, I hear somebody snoring in the room. <laughs> but that was like, how can you sleep, man? <laughs> Wake up! 
I'm trying to push a human out of my body. <laughs> And finally, Gracia arrived and everything went really But these complications actually was something that led you to creating this groundbreaking foundation um, just to help other women. Yeah, so when Gracia was already one and a half months, then we moved to India and I stopped working and we settled in India completely. And then the whole experience started because you are up whole night as this new baby you have to take care of. And I got into the spiral of thing like, I want to be the perfect mother, I want to be the perfect wife, I want to do it all perfect. And then something in my mind said like, you have to really calm down and relax. And that's when I started feeling like, you know, we come from a background where we have such a big support system, doctors are so supportive, so many privileges, and still we find it so difficult. What about people who have nothing, not even enough food? People who are not educated enough, do not have enough awareness. These women who have nobody with them to take care of themselves and the new child. Right. So that's how I thought, like, I want to do something for them. Amazing. You also had your own radio show. Yes, I did. So what was that about? So the show was all about highlighting the kind of problems women are facing in our society and also kind of extraordinary things women are doing in India. So we spoke about problems, we also spoke about achievement. Hi, this is Priyanka Raina and this week let's listen to the amazing women of courage. Aisi women jo darti nahi, balki lardti. It was such an eye opener yeah. hearing stories from different parts of the country. We spoke about female feticide, mm. domestic mm. violence, wow. and not having enough rights in the family, and like day to day life where women is just ignored. He just came on the show and sang a song? No, well, I told him about, about this concept that we are thinking of a promotional song for the show and I told him like it's a beautiful song about your daughters and then he was like, I'm, I'm gonna sing it for sure. Are you a singer too? Do you sing? <laughs> Gracia, I'm showing any signs? Oh yeah. yeah, I think she's gonna be a pop star or something. Do you think I so? really think so. She's like, the other day I we were you know, doing this exercise with flashcards, what is what, and there was a picture of violin. So she didn't know of course and she's like, oh mama it is. Oh. <laughs> she? So watch out for that one. Yeah, she is. And, and what a great story for her, you know, just to know that her arrival into this world led to this incredible foundation that is supporting such a wonderful cause that her own mother has set up in her name. I mean, that's such a beautiful yeah. way to start your life. You should be very proud. And she's very much part of it, actually. Yeah. I'll say that, like, she's the real founder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. she's always going with us to the camps and the uh, any visits we do in the slums. Amazing. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Miss Field. We've got plenty more episodes coming up for you with a kick-ass lineup of women. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a thing.